So Barack Obama, Obama wants to, uh, well, give an education to black male voters. And he was talking down to them, smearing them, calling black men, black men voters, as sexist, as being anti-Kamala. Well, look, everybody has a right to vote and think how which way they feel. I believe in being a free speech absolutist. I believe in free speech. I believe in free speech. I believe in free speech. So uh, if there are black men that don't want to vote for Kamala Harris, well, they might have a very good reason. And maybe if the Democrats gave a damn, they would actually sit down and listen and not talk down to black men. But see, the thing is, Kamala's losing not only black men, but black women. But first, let's talk about the fallout. Let's talk about the fallout and the response. And I got two people in particular who definitely want to give an education to one Barack Obama. So first of all, shout out to Nick from RBN. And we also got a video also from JB as well. So let's pull up this video here. Shout out again to Hotspot and shout out to Nick of RBN. They're doing fantastic work. Barack Obama accuses black men of being secretly sexist because Kamala Harris is not doing as well as expected in the demographic. We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly. The Democratic Party really think they own our vote. Notice how Donald... Now, the thing is, Obama, under your administration, black Americans lost more wealth than under Bush. Huh. You know... I wish that the Democrats would understand that their policies have pissed off a lot of people. You're losing everybody in your coalition, Democrats. It's like everybody realizes that you crapped your pants and you're not realizing why people don't want to sit next to you. Donald Trump won the white woman vote two times. Meanwhile, Democrats never talk to them like this. Maybe, just maybe, black men are not into Kamala Harris because she's running for president like she's Dick Cheney. The fact that Kamala Harris made her career locking up black men, and now she's running as a unhinged Neil Connor Republican, that is all the reasons why black men shouldn't support her. Black Americans are the furthest left racial group in the United States, with many of them supporting reforms in criminal justice and having a positive view of socialism while having a negative view of capitalism. So have Democrats ever considered the far right shift that makes even Dick Cheney and Ronald Reagan Republicans comfortable with the party may be one of the reasons why black men are fleeing the party? Nope. All that liberals can do is condescend to us and accuse us of being sexist for not supporting their favorite genocidal girl boss. Now, there's a couple more things I want to pull up here. This is a video response that JB did. All skin folk ain't kin folk. And with that being said, do you think that just because Kamala Harris is a black woman that we're going to trust her just because she's skin folk, just because she has, uh, you know, the gender of our mamas and our sisters and our aunties? And our grandmas? Absolutely not. The focus is on policy. Mm -hmm. It is not on the gender or the race of the person. Though that does have a secondary or tertiary factor. It is not the main thing. All skin folk ain't kin folk. He's not wrong. And JB has every right to voice his opinion. I also got another video here of three other individuals. Uh, all of them have a very large following on social media. And they're responding to Barack Obama talking down to black men. 
for this election cycle. Sorry, Obama. I'm a black man and I'm voting for Donald Trump for president. And there is no amount of lecturing or bullying or shaming that you can do that is going to make me change that decision. I am not afraid to vote for Kamala Harris because she is a woman. I refuse to vote for Kamala Harris because she has spent the last four years destroying this country. She has spent the last four years throwing up the, the borders um, to illegal immigrants. She has spent the last four years destroying this economy. We have seen over the past couple of months that she is not fit to be president. She can barely speak. She can't articulate a vision. And actually, she's pretty stupid. And if you think that I, as a black man, am going to let that waltz into the White House, that that is going to get my vote because you're lecturing me and you're bullying me. And you may be the surrogate black dad for a lot of fatherless black boys that are running around this country. But I got a dad. I know who he is. And it ain't you. I'm voting for Donald Trump for president. Take it or leave it. Sorry, Obama. Hello, America, and hello, Georgia. I'm Vernon Jones, former state representative from the great state of Georgia. And I'm out doing my normal morning jog. By the way, it's a great day to be in Georgia. It's a beautiful fall day. But anyhow, I just had to pause for the cause. I, like many of you, observed and listened and watched Barack Obama last night as he addressed black men. But as a black man, he did everything but address us. What he did, he berated black men, he rebuked black men, he even scolded black men, primarily because we will not fall in line and vote for Madam Lockup or brother Kamala Harris. So in other words, they're knocked from the door from the political police. Political police, you must fall in line and vote for the Kamala. It's interesting seeing how Democrats are bring out every single tact that they can do. Beg, cry, and shame. Scream. Berate. Now, I feel voting Republican is no different than voting Democrat. That's how I feel. I've made it very clear on the show. I am anti-two party. I'm a double hater, and I love being a double hater because I hate the Democratic Party. I hate the Republican Party. Voters who are Democrats and Republicans, I am ever hopeful for the day when all of you do wake up and you join us and support the third party independent movement. So we break away from the two party system. And actually, dare I get, say it, maybe we get a true representational government, a constitutional republic that's no longer bought and sold by the top one percent. But this is a response to Democrats. Democrats, again, after Obama's two terms, Donald Trump was a response. Biden comes in. Nothing fundamentally changes. Donald Trump, as we said in 2020, myself and my colleague Daniel both said that Trump was going to run again in 2020. We were, pro and, and, correction, not in 2020, but in 2024. And we were both proven correct on that. Then, Democrats, you start panicking and crying how Trump not only wins his Republican primary, but it's not only defeating Biden, but it's now neck and neck tied up with Kamala Harris. Maybe Democrats, if you actually followed through with your promises and with policies, people wouldn't be breaking away from your coalition. Maybe people wouldn't be considering voting for Trump or voting third party. All the blame lands on you. But when you have a jag off like Barack Obama start talking down to black male voters, maybe people don't like being talked down to or lectured to Obama. Maybe no one wants to hear a quote unquote Democrat try and tell them how we should be living our lives. Maybe, Obama, if the Democrats actually had a candidate worthwhile, people would be enthusiastic to support them. But you can't do it because that's a bridge too far. Because that's a record. As if black men are too stupid that we can't vote our self-interest, what's best for us, our pocketbook, our families. As if we've been immune to the past three and a half years, as if we don't know that gas prices have been higher on the Kamala Harris, food prices higher on the Kamala Harris. Interest rates on home mortgages higher under Kamala Harris. Notice he's not saying Biden. <laughs> Biden's been swept under the rug. <laughs> Old man Biden's done. And runaway borders under Kamala Harris. But you know what? That's what the liberal white Democratic Party did. They dispatched Barack Obama out there to whip black men back on the plantation to vote Democrat. And you know, President Obama, he meant a lot to black people. But he didn't do anything for black people. And for him to want to come down from his mansion in Martha's Vineyard and tell black men how we should vote, really? You don't even live in Chicago anymore. You left your black community, Barack Obama, and you want to tell us how to vote? We're not having that. 
and we're not voting for Kamala Harris. Also, one other thing here, too, that Obama Library is helping contribute to gentrification in the black communities here in Chicago. People are being displaced. Schools are being shut down. Hey, Obama, Obama, where are you at? See, I, I remember I, re I remember that 2008 uh, uh, election night. It was here in Chicago where Obama made his announcement, you know, and, you know, where he where he won. It was a big it, it was a big day. Little did we all know that we were being sold a lie. Don't trust the Democrats. Do not trust the Democrats. They will stab you in the back. Well, John Stephen Pearson, one of the young black men that President Obama yesterday tried to lecture, he's supporting Kamala Harris just because she, quote, looks like him. Now, guys, I don't know about y'all, but I think that my ancestors fought far too hard for my right to vote in this country for me to support someone just because they look like me. Especially when that person who looks like me doesn't give a damn about me. Kamala Harris for her entire political career hasn't been a single thing for black people, black men, or anyone actually for that matter. She failed to secure the border. She hasn't created a single job. She is actually probably uniquely terrible at her job. Barack Obama, another person who didn't do a damn thing for black people in Sid, Sid the Kid, 87 writes, only Joe, only Bo Jiden truly knows who is and ain't black. That's right. We forgot that Joe Biden said that. If you don't vote for him, then you ain't black. <laughs> ah, Democrats. Democrats, all you, oh, I, I can't wait to see you guys cry. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be great. He was president, believes that black men should set aside our disagreements, set aside our grievances, and just take one for the team. Barack, we've been taking one for the team when it comes to supporting the Democrat Party for decades. And what do we have to show for? Our inner cities are destroyed. Violent crime is up. We are living in poverty in far many, too many communities across this country. That is the reality of progressive policies in this country and all across America. So no, Barack, I'm not going to support Kamala Harris because you said that that is my duty as a young black man. No, I'm going to support Donald Trump, the president who actually delivered for black people, part about the lowest black unemployment rate in our nation's history, the president who actually gave a damn about our community. That's not rocket science, Barack. It's common sense. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to pull up this video here. Shout out to Jamal Green, good friend of the show. Listen up, Kamala's doing worse with black women as well. So when are they going to target them? Watch this video breakdown. And sometimes there's a trend line that I never noticed before. And now I am going to be raising the volume because it is a little bit low on this one. So let me rewind this. And sometimes there's a trend line that I never noticed before and make me go, whoa, this is one of them. All right, this is the democratic margin among black men under the age of 45 in presidential elections. You go back to November of 2012, what do you see? You see Obama by 81. Clinton only won him by 63. Then we're all the way down to Biden last time around yeah. by 53. A tremendous drop already. And then you take a look at the average of the most recent polls and Kamala Harris is up by only 41 points. That is about half the margin that Obama won them by back in November of 2012. And this, I think, is, you know, when Barack Obama goes in last week when he was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, essentially talking to young black men, he made it seem like it was a Kamala Harris specific problem. Uh-uh. This is part of a longstanding yeah. trend of young black men moving away from the Democratic Party. And Kamala Harris is just the latest to face that magnitude of black, younger black men going towards the Republican. That was, was mo most interesting here is the trend line and where some of the biggest drops happened or already happened in this case. How about black men overall? How about black men overall? It's part of the same picture. You know, we're looking once again at younger black men. It looks like the worst Democratic performance since 1960, since JFK versus Richard Nixon. It's the same thing among black men overall. Again, part of a similar trend, but here actually the drop off isn't as dramatic, right? Barack Thank you, Pai May. We got Pai May in the chat. Now, obviously, I can't I can't really do his voice, but whoa, whoa, dummies keep trying to force their terrible candidates on their voters. I will take their arm and make it my own. That's a great, that's such a great character, Pai Mei. If you haven't seen Kill Bill Volume 2, ah, work of art. Thank you, Pai Mei. I'm glad, hey, Pai Mei, I give you my nod of respect.
Barack Obama won him by 85. Then you see 71 with Clinton, 69. Biden, basically the same thing, holding steady. But here, again, very, very weak. Only a 54-point margin. Now, again, still winning him by a large margin, but considerably lower than what we're used to. Certainly considerably lower what we had during the Obama years. The bottom line is Kamala Harris with younger black men and then black men overall putting in historically weak performance for a Democratic Is she getting any relief with black women? All right. So, you know, we're talking about the trend line, right? And black women, look, she's doing better with black women than she is doing among black men. But here, there isn't a trend line almost until we get to Kamala Harris. So again, this is a black mar uh, margin among black women. Look, Obama won him by 93, very large margin. Clinton won him by 93, a very large margin. Biden did a little bit worse at 85, but then you look here and you get a 71 point margin. Now again, these are large margins, but the bottom line is when you're talking about the base of the Democratic Party, you would think that Kamala Harris would do very well among black women based upon history. And of course, no, based upon history, black women are giving a middle finger to Kamala Harris. And for those of you who may not remember, we actually did a segment in which a black mother was still dealing with the aftermath and legal challenges of trying to get out of jail and also provide for her uh, daughter who suffers from sickle cell anemia, even though she sent many letters to the schools explaining her daughter's absentee because her daughter is in some physical pain because of her ailment. Uh, what did Kamala's policies do as attorney general? Oh, arrest the mom and also bring in the press to show her getting arrested. That truancy thing that she likes to laugh about. So black men and black women leaving Kamala Harris, abandoning Kamala Harris. I'm not surprised. And when you have people like Obama who failed to follow through, who failed to upkeep their promises, of course voters are going to give you the middle finger. Do you think we like being talked down to and lectured to? Every day, every day is a struggle here in America. Every day is a struggle to put food on the table, pay the bills, provide for their families or for themselves. The American dream, you got to be in a coma. You don't have to be asleep to believe it. You have to be in a near dead a coma where chances of waking up is never going to happen to actually believe it. Because right now we're living in a nightmare. Impossible to own a home. Impossible to rent an apartment. Small businesses struggling. People out there in the streets. Infrastructure falling apart. Mass corruption. Democrats, you contributed to the nightmare. You didn't uplift people. You imprisoned people. You kept them down. You used your jackboot. You contributed to the neoliberal nightmare. You're no different than the Republican Party Democrats. The only true difference is you put on this fancy mask showing that you care. So when black men and black women say no to Kamala, it's not that they're being sexist or reverse racist. They're actually thinking for themselves, making their own sovereign independent choice as they should, and vote however which way they feel for a candidate that has earned their vote, be it for Trump or Libertarian or for Green, or if they're not going to vote at all. It is their choice like it is for every single American in this country. But you want to know who doesn't believe in that? The Democratic Party. They want you to fall in line and obey the orders. We don't have to do that anymore. Democrats, beg harder, cry harder. And on election night, I really do hope I see you guys melt down. I have to see you cry because you know what? You're going to see a lot of white liberals. They're not going to say it out there blatantly. They're not going to say it out there in the open. But you're going to see some passive aggressive racism from a lot of white liberals. I, I promise you, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. And then they're going to quickly apologize. And be like, I didn't mean to say it like this. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. They're going to reveal who they are. Those white liberals. They're the fox in the hen house. They're not the guard dog. If you fool me once, it's because I didn't think a guard was needed. If you fool me twice, it's because I didn't learn the lesson, so it bears repeating. If you try the same play three times running, it's because you know what's coming, and you didn't come to lead, you came to purposefully be misleading. Democracy is dry, it's been a century bleeding, the husk is gaping open to the sky, out in the field where all the sheep just keep on circling and worrying and bleeding. They're waiting for the shepherd that they've tried to hide their faith in, but he's so appealing. 
They'd gladly give their fleece at such a freeing feeling that even when he leads them to the ledge and starts to urge them on, they're positively beaming. They were told that they were on their way to save democracy, so even as they plummet, they just gloat. They don't consider screaming. And halfway up the cliff, the shepherd's cozy little mittens wrap around the staff of shattered human hopes on which he's leaning. He shows the gentle grin that used to stir your inner spark, and he says, not me, us, as he gestures to the oligarchs. He knows that if he runs, they're going to stop him like a stolen car. And he'll easily surrender because it bought a lot of time for laying mines in all the grassroots. Suddenly, the tiniest of movements gets you blown apart. Suddenly, you're in a play that's set on an election day and voting for the fire unaware you're playing Joan of Arc. Suddenly, the shepherd pulls the rug and slips a hood across your clueless mug and everything goes zero dark. I'm going to warn you once more before it's 2024 and you fuck around and find out who your heroes are to take a step back from the herd and you'll learn that you can spot who all the shearers are. If you really want to know the product that they're selling, I can take you where the mirrors are. If you think your voice is finally ready, I can tell you where the lyrics are. I hid them in a box I had to bury neath the cobble when they carpet bombed the promenade and raided all the street bazaars. Now all we've got's the marketplace, and you're too broke to even bother asking what the options for your treatment are. Suddenly, the raw debris of homeless human dignity will find it has a hundred teeth for every badge and sweeper's arm. Suddenly, they speak in solidarity, and each is armed. Suddenly, the sheep can see the shepherd for his truest form and all pitch in at once to help him buy the farm. And now it's zero dark. And all is calm and peaceful, save the distant wail of sirens that approach beside the flames of dawn. Suddenly, the carrot's just a string that's on a stick, and all your movements make you sick because the prize is gone. Now, we could go and flee into the forest low and meek, or we can exercise our right to feast and go and graze on Biden's lawn. Because he's been sowing seeds that seep a toxin out to sap a bit from each of us and keep on leeching decades after Biden's gone. So regardless who they summon out of hell to come and do the job, it will not feel like Biden's gone. But in that time of hopelessness, you cannot trust the shepherd when he once again comes asking you to humor him his siren song. And it's cute that you can innocently, honestly assume that's just a symptom of a system that was wired wrong, and not the standard feature, basic function, primary objective of a mass hypnosis firebomb. You don't need to know the words to cry along. Someday it'll hit you like an officer who pistol whipped their ride along, broke his jaw and kept his job and kept it moving right along. That voting isn't red or blue or black or white or right or wrong. Voting's like a firing squad where you can choose the firearm. It's slow extinction by and large. It's Super Tuesday supercharged. It's all your futures, roots and all, just tossed out on a garbage barge. It's everybody dropping out to push the biggest oligarch. It's everybody voting fire registered as Joan of Arc.